Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations as Bikini is on the stand with incredibly easy to bust open testimony. We haven't had to press anything yet because it's all kind of really super obvious. As for example, this statement, the stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. Was it really because the autopsy report of course says the body fell 10 feet after death? It doesn't seem right at all, does it? Why is this so easy? Objection! Maybe it's just Miles Edgeworth. Impressive logic, that's what I like to say anyway. Oh please do, my brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The, the autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet, however, this fall was after she was killed. Ah! Th that's right! It says after death right here! The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take a 10 foot fall? Indeed, ah. Uh... Order! Order! The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room. Don't you agree? Th that is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. She was then thrown out of a window down into the courtyard below. Objection! Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Deg's Nim's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Wah! No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found in my glorious playoff beard. However, if there was no blood in the room, then you'll claim that... Wah! I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this, as I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood? Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed. With the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Order, order, order! I must admit that this is a probable version of events. I expect no less from Francisca von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. Hmm. It seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness, please! Remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now! The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape, especially my back and my mood. Sister, please, give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we have finished here. With the whip? Oh boy. Alright, alright. Right, so even more details. Will this be as easy to bust? When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see a stab Mystic Lee's. Oh, really? I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic Ami was... When I woke, Mystic Ami was stabbing Mystic Lee's through the back! Hmm. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Francisca Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. Right, this time it seems a lot better of a statement. When I looked across the scene, the sword was already in place. Hold it! At that time, was the victim bleeding? Well, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course. So I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. I 
I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see the incident in which the victim was stabbed? Think about it now, I didn't actually see a stab Mr. Galiz. Well, you know, that means you were lying. Think carefully. This is very important. It's Iris we are talking about here. I'm thinking for all I'm worth. No, when I looked over, the sword was already in Mr. Galiz's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but... This testimony supports her theory. The victim was stabbed in a room and then dropped into the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. I've never seen so much blood before. Hold it! So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? Th th that's right! Some of it had splattered onto Iris too! When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room. And her blood flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. W what? Her clothes were blood flecked as well? Hmm. That seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further? Doesn't hurt, surely? But this is important information that we did not know. Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw a little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now, you say you saw the victim bleeding? Well, well. I say that what I saw is what I saw. W what did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed. But I saw the girl pull the sword out of her. Plain as day. Pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it, it came out. Witness, you will add this statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. So pulling something out isn't a murder. Assuming, of course, the victim was already dead, anyway. I saw the instant in which the blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out. The blade plunged into the hilt. This is our important statement, then. That's why it wasn't so easy to bust this time. We had to press. Plunged into the hilt, though. As I thought, completely contradicts this as evidence. Plunged into the hilt. Would A, at that angle, leave the body propped up quite away? Because this is a big sword. B, pulling that sword out isn't going to be easy, because of look at all the jagged edges to stick into your victim. C, blood only goes up, not even halfway. Nowhere near the hilt. I think this is what we're after. Objection! Sister Bikini, you're a reliable witness. At least, I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. Well, what do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain you- Wah! Explain yourself! To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Objection! Doesn't appear? What meaningless dribble. I too may appear to be weak and frail. But I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, should I so choose. The objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. Objection! That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at all the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. Th that's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when the blade is left in the body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. I think I like this Edgeworth guy. I like Phoenix. He really thinks along my level. My level, I say. Hmm. My level of failing. Nope, Edgeworth is a cut above. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. Indeed it would, it would have poured out. Objection! That's nothing more than conjecture! In reality, the victim was stabbed with a chichichito. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly, and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. Objection! I'm not finished. There is still one more. 
Conclusive contradiction. He, you've still got more. This one is simple. If this sword really was for us to gnaw the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? Ah! If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No! Who's the foolish fool now? Oh, no, oh, ah! Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. But what does this mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but having come this far, there can only be one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shichishito. What? A foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think this sword was the murder weapon? Well... It's because Mystic Ami was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that the Shichishito was the murder weapon. Order! 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 Ah! So maybe the Shichishito was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Hmm. That's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth. If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes. Namely, where's the murder weapon? Where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall and the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found. Th that's... Answer the question, Miss Von Karma. No evidence of that kind was found. Hmm. Another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me. Can I say something? Sorry. Voice. I just remembered something, actually. Again? What is it, sister? I was just thinking. It's possible. That just maybe. What actually happened was... It was just over there. What exactly is going on in the boot here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe. I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? Well then. I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? A location of the weapon, obviously. By the sound of the testimony. I saw the murder at around 11pm. And after asking that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. And there I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge. But less than five using one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River. And came back while I was knocked out. Iris could have done that. She could drive a snowmobile after all. Why, you actually seem quite bent on... Sticking Iris with the blame. Oh, I want to save her. Not really. However, this testimony comes down to one thing. This entire breaking of this line of thought will be all based on time, so we really should review the court record. Hmm. Witness, please tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape. What with my back and my age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Here's a photograph. A snowmobile, eh? I see. Well, it certainly is an interesting theory. The tracks begin in front of Hazakura Temple and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. Right then. Interesting that we got that right then. This seems to probably be our strong piece of evidence. That solves your pesky little problem, yes? The Eagle River's current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter, making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. Did you really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? 
Mr. Edworth, your cross-examination, please. Right then, so location of the weapon, you say? Before we continue with this, let's click present, even though I'm not going to. We're going to look for everything with a time signature, which isn't the map. Technically, there was a time added to that, which is 10. But that's probably not related. We have the weather data. So snow was 7 to approximately 10.50. Lightning 10 to approximately 11 p.m. Lightning strike Tusky Bridge at 10.45. Around 30 minutes past between the fire starting and going out. So a lot of time factors here. We've got... Anything else with time? Well, the death one as well. The ring, ring lights out bell at 10 p.m. Okay. So, of course, it was... 10 to 11 p.m. were not definite when things took place. But she had words in her own statement, didn't she, that were time-related. And then we've got this. Where we go from here... ...is the interesting part. I saw the murder at around 11 p.m., which means you saw... ...Iris, didn't you? The bridge was already on fire at this point, but you're not using the bridge. You were sure about the time? Yes. I was worried about it, after all. Why was that? Because I have a strong sense of responsibility, especially at this time of year. The acolyte was being doused in freezing water at the time. I couldn't very well take it easy in the bath all night now, could I? So at 11 I decided to leave Hazakura Temple. Her estimation of the time seems reliable, at least. Please continue, sister. And after asking they'd be reported, I went out to the main gate. You asked Phoenix Wright to report the crime, correct? Right, right. The one who trampled me. It seems she's the type to hold a grudge. There isn't a phone in the main hall, so I sent him to the bridge. Phoenix Wright. He didn't even have his cell phone on him. He had forgotten it at home, apparently. What a naive boy, as always. Not only do I always carry my phone, but I always have my whip in hand, too. Anyway, I was really scared, and it was taking a while to get back. So I thought I'd grab by the main gate for a spell. And there, I saw tracks! Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used! Hold it! As I recall, there was a snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. That's it. That's the only one we have. It'll run no matter how much snow falls. Now you're certain the snowmobile was there at the main gate when you arrived? Yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So she had already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. I'm not sure if this is really relevant. What should I do? Why not press? I need answers to every possible doubt. The snowmobile in question. Was it still warm at that time? Huh? 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, eh? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? I'm playing to a slow crowd here. Just to try and figure out if the engine had actually been run. It goes without saying that using a snowball will heat its engine. If it was still warm, then it means it was recently used. Ah, I see, I never thought of that. Hmm, that's right. I overlooked that too. Of course you did. Then answer the question, please, witness. She didn't check. Simple. I don't often go around touching hot engines. Hmm. However, now that you mention it, there wasn't any snow on it. Snow? Yes, for some reason, only the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. There wasn't any snow on it. Curses. It seems highly likely that the killer did use the snowmobile then, eh? How long does it take to get to Dusky Bridge by snowmobile? It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than 5 using one of those. Hold it's it. the time that matters here. In that case, why didn't you use it yourself? You could have spared yourself some walking. Ah, there's a reason for that. Have we got a moment for me to explain? I think that's why the question was asked in the first place. It was about a month ago. I was driving my beloved little snowmobile, happy as can be. I'd fetched some water and was heading back when I went and crashed into a tree. The tree in my back both went crunch, just like that. Crunch. Hmm. Crunch. I haven't been able to find the courage to write anything since then. Anyway, the killer must have used it. That's kind of supposition then. 
Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. Refresh our memory. How long were you knocked out for? Like I said, somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes. It's possible to get to the bridge and back in 10 minutes using the snowmobile. I have to concede that is more than enough time. Is that all you wish to concede, Miles Edgeworth? Yes, pretty much. Iris could have done that. She can drive a snowball after all, but that's just... plotting a bang on. So at this point in time, we're either looking for time... or something else. Came back. Maybe time is the distraction here and I got a bit too glued on. But with that, we'll continue down my line of thought. If you know what I'm thinking. Next episode, join me then for more trials and tribulations. As we follow some tracks. Bye bye.